Rob Zombie's Halloween 2 came out two years later in 2009 and I don't know if this is more polarizing than the first one but it's definitely wasn't loved just like the first one it is another sort of interesting entry in the franchise But we'll start thinking about it later on. So John Carpenter was offered a cameo in the film by Zombie, but turned it down. Probably because he was busy. Or he just doesn't like being on a camera. I mean, I'm assuming that one. It's very simple. He doesn't want to be in camera. Zombie originally stated he would never do a sequel until the studio decided to make it. Then he signed on to write and direct because he didn't want someone else ruining his vision. Which I found strange. He stated before he didn't want to do a sequel, but then it was like, dude was like, I'm gonna do it. Ah, like, oh, no, 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 no. L let me do it. It's like, I guess, yeah. He didn't want his vision to be ruined, which I guess makes sense. I don't know. He like backpedaled real quick there, but sure. The decision to give Lloyd the name Angel as a real name was meant to emphasize her as an extreme opposite of Michael, which makes sense. So one thing about Lori in this movie, so after the events of the first one, she is tra traumatized, right? Just like born inspiration, inspiration from H2O. She starts seeing therapy. She starts becoming more, more mean, uh, which is fun to watch in the director's cut. It is so much fun to see her, this actress being a complete total bitch because she's basically having a breakdown in every scene. Well, not every scene, but she's having a breakdown despite her going to these therapy sessions. It's, a, it's as if she's having a breakdown and she's she being overwhelmed by fear and trauma from the previous movie and i think this actress plays lori a different lori very well i love that about the movie itself yeah dr luma's in this film is a bit of a dick he uses his what happened in i'm assuming 07 of the previous movie and sort of extorts it for his book and so the whole reason as to why he's doing it was it wasn't really to help michael but to help like write his book now just kind of a 180 from his character in the previous movie he becomes gritty and selfish and very narcissistic and like just enclosure in himself which again different take but just kind of like came out of nowhere like okay sure just to be different i guess the music and sort of the theme and whatnot is clearly inspired by zombies taste for music which i didn't mind the theme is good as always but this one seems just kind of there oh apparently i missed this this is the second halloween film to reference the serial killer jeffrey dahmer first time mentioned back in halloween the curse of michael mars during barry sims radio talk show wow i didn't even notice that so i guess this is something that they added in there i guess they're trying to reference jeffrey dahmer trying to found like Myers? I don't know. They just mentioned him just because why not? Oh god, let's talk about Brad Dorf and sort of his relationship with Darren Hester's character where she does sadly die in this movie. In the previous movie, she gets close to dying and Brad Dorf is there caring to her. But this one, Myers comes back and like kills the shit out of her. And in that scene where I've heard people say it was being over dramatic and played, I thought Brad Dorf played it perfectly where he sees his daughter all bloody and dead and starts crying. I want to go in there. I, let me handle this. Where? Is she? I want to go in there, Sheriff. No. Oh, God. Oh, I thought that was a very good scene. Like, apparently people didn't like it. I personally dug it, and this shows how great of an actor he is. Again, I love him. He's Chucky. Chucky's one of my favorite sort of horror franchises, so of course I'm gonna love Brad Dorf. But yeah, that was a very good scene in my opinion. But apparently a lot of people didn't like it. Also, the first sort of what pissed people off, I guess, the first 20 and 25 minutes was a complete dream sequence, which I get, but it was cool, right? Seeing Myers, which the mask, I do like the mask of the first one and this one. It's, it's the same mask. Later, it's changed, but we'll get to that. But all of the scars are on like one of the eyes and then the side and the bottom loved it it looks dirty and grindy looks awesome but anyways getting back to what the hell i was gonna say zombie's wife is in it again however she is useless in this movie she's there in like a white dress which looks like the white dress from living dead girls music video from rap zombie but she has like this horse or unicorn and it's like a, a white light from myers because i don't know that was just random that's one thing i didn't like it was just like okay i need to have my wife in the movie so it's just put her in a white dress and you know, Car repair. Okay, sure. Why not? This kind of 
useless thing there but whatever Myers in this movie is pretty brutal and violent honestly again that opening scene where the dream sequence where he's just killing that nurse and he's killing people and shit is fucking brutal the new look from Myers in is where he has a hood over his head he has a long hair long beard and he's basically a hobo walk are you a giant around wherever he is i like that in the previous video i talked about how he doesn't care about his hygiene he has his mental illness he clearly doesn't care he looks fucking dirty and i don't know i just like that look he's walking around very tall too oh this is funny so the original halloween 2 in 1901 took place entirely in a hospital the first 25 minutes of the dream sequence is at the beginning of the hospital where laura's running for michael and it was thought to be a homage to the whole movie the original however zombie has since denied this sort of speculation because he states that he didn't even like the original halloween 2 so he didn't like that movie i can understand why it, it's a bit more slower than even the original laurie strode is barely in the movie probably really busy around the time like sleeping beauty in the whole movie even though he still signed on to write and direct the movie and the unrated director's cut laurie is much quicker to anger due to her ptsd and gets into arguments with annie and her psychiatrist these movies are cut out theatrical version presumably to make laurie more likable which i get from just a typical movie gore if they see this our main, main final girl and protagonist just kind of rage at other people because of ptsd and not make it likable but man those scenes were fun though those were like oh this is the saving grace of this movie these were quite fun so i guess we'll get to the ending and sort of the different cuts so as i stated before previously she's more likable in the theatrical cut while in the producer's cut she's more of a more quicker to anger because of ptsd so they played it safe in the theatrical while in the producer's cut they kind of showed somewhat i, I want to say is it realistic she showed a more like sort of screw out more realistic side where you know, it feels like no one's understanding her because she's went through this trauma and you know everyone's trying to help her but she, she looks at everyone like you don't get it she gets quick to just being angry and be psychotic and she starts hanging around with not sh bad or shady people but people she normally wouldn't hang around with and starts dancing and shit like that i think there's like a weird scene by the way where she's in the, the whole town she's touching animals and there's like like a weird like music video edited like uh, rob zombie obviously he's in a rock band or whatever so he brings a music video sort of style to the movies and there's like this fucking i wouldn't say dumb but weird scene and she's touching an animal and just like cuts away or like it's like a weird like loud music and it's like just cutting her touching an animal or something i don't know maybe i'll, I'll find like an image of it that was weird i don't know why that was the way that was there but it was just there again with the previous movie the director's cut just has long scenes for kind of no reason ultimately just no goddamn reason just because you know what let's just do it why not i'll uh, go back to the mask in in this movie years have passed well depending on which cut the theatrical is one year and for some reason the director's cut is two years why the year change it wouldn't make a difference because the events turn out the same there's the weird year difference but the mask you can see half of Meyer's face in this mask and i like that i didn't mind that you know is it a mask technically when it's half gone i don't know there's been debates and fights over that on the internet billy does matter to me but it looks cool it looks like half is just like it's like a i don't know having playing half the human and half like the bad side i don't know i, I just like that a lot about it so let's actually talk about the endings and the unrated director's cut commentary zombie says that the in the original ending the three main characters all die and laurie strode's ward scene is really in fact her last thoughts as many mistakes as if she's still alive so yeah so in the theatrical ending the both movie ends with her in a ward looking up implying that she's going insane however th those endings get there are completely different in theatrical cuts michael loomis who's an asshole he decides to own up to himself and be like you know what i'm gonna face my myers and laura they're in this like, little shed abandoned house and we get a shot of lots of screaming lots of screaming and then we just cut back to them coming out and i believe he stabs loomis i think i think both cuts loomis dies either way and then the cops and brad Dorf orders him to shoot him he dies and then laurie picks up the mask and puts it on and it cuts to that shot of the ward that's how it ends implying that she has embraced because of the trauma embraced in her like myers or something i don't know his essence or something i soul or something i don't know going into her or because of the events that happened to her and the previous in this movie she goes crazy like a family like bloodline thing or something and then in the producer ugh, i keep saying producers a theatrical cut uh, we have more and more yelling and then it cuts to the outside part where the helicopters or cops are at and it's silent Silent. and i love this silence where it's super silent you know what's going on in the house and there's just panic shots of the outside of the house or shed it goes on for a bit and then boom myers and Loomis gets out michael takes off his mask and yells die michael for god in hell die 
for Verstappen and Loomis, which is the first time ever in the series where Adult Myers actually speaks, and it arguably pissed a lot of people off, more likely Halloween fans. I don't mind that. Again, I'm not a huge Michael Myers slash Halloween fan, so he said die. I was like, oh, that's different. But I personally just scoffed that as, okay, sure, why not? Just have him say one word. And so he, I don't think, he, so Loomis doesn't die yet, right? And then Lori comes out, she gets a knife and then stabs Loomis. So she kills Loomis. And It cuts to the warding thing or no i'm sorry take that back and then one of the cops shoot her and then, and then she dies and it shows like a cool shot ahead sort of, uh, sort of like imagery where the three main characters of the series dr loomis laurie strode and michael myers lay flat on the grass that, that was a cool shot and then it goes into the war thing where she looks up at the camera when she's crazy however zombie does say that you know all three three main characters die and that's just laurie strode like in her thoughts or like last shot or last words or something and then we see like his wife in the fucking unicorn again that's still weird and dumb but yeah I, I guess for like a zombie's vision with the three main characters dying at the end i think i can get around that okay how we got there was kind of dreadful <laughs> no i don't think anything nothing was particularly bad except for the his wife and the weird horse unicorn thing but other than that overall it's okay it still has it's way more fun and entertaining because of Lori strode and how how angry she gets i was really funny but other than that yeah overall it's okay i don't think it's some people say this is the worst well i can get it it's completely different it ruins you know if you're a halloween fan it ruins the series for you i can get that but someone who's not and can appreciate different things this movie wasn't too bad i liked it the half mask thing i like the hobo myers the okay the loomis thing was kind of dumb turning him into being selfish and then coming back around and be like oh i'm sorry michael i failed you i failed you it seems like zombie didn't know what to do with him it seems like in the second movie he was like well i signed on shit i gotta do something this is something drastically different and just making complete ass not asshole but it can be selfish Lori strode is awesome <laughs> well in the producer's cut for the major cuts so as the witch cut i prefer i definitely prefer the director's cut despite some you know the die line and whatnot i just really like the inner and your aspects i was about to say entertaining is but the anger from Lori in the, in the director's cut was so entertaining throughout i very much enjoyed it and preferred it than the theatrical release where she's you know just kind of like hey, i'm okay i'm okay theatrical to me is sort of like the safe bet movie just it played it safe however in the theatrical like you know what let's let's just make your dad a bitch right having these ptsd issues borrowing from h2o and then you know having the three main protagonists dying in the end i thought it was you know not beautiful i was gonna say beautiful it was not expected <laughs> i don't know what's the right word but it was like okay i, I get what zombie's trying to go for and you know as i stated earlier in a previous video he hated working on the films because of studio mandolino one so and he knew with those three characters main characters dying cool idea again getting there was kind of rough Ugh, i don't know just weird music video cut because Rob Zombie has background on that. Weird wife just being there. Loomis kind of being a different Loomis. The actor playing him, uh, Malcolm, is a good actor. But seeing like Rob Zombie kind of messed him up just a little bit. They didn't have quite the presence as uh, Donald Pleasance. However, I do prefer this Laura Stroh. She's more likable. I guess more grounded and realistic in a way. Because again, Jamie Lee Curtis, she's sort of the normal, good, likable, uh, relatable final girl. And this one, she's more grounded and somewhat a realistic take. If this were to happen, in real life which i can appreciate for what rob zombie's doing and he didn't do a shot for shot remake at least i can appreciate that there are huge fans of this movie like rob zombie fanatics and while i don't really align with that i can appreciate those fans and see a lot of good in these two movies even though i do think they're just both okay so overall did i forget anything I i'm afraid because anytime I i'm like done recording i like always forget something so i don't want to like miss anything nah you know what screw it, i'll just end here so overall rob zombie's halloween 2 is okay i prefer the director's cut and this movie movie is better than what people make it out to be i see some people put this on like dead last on their list it's like again while i get that maybe i don't know i don't know what to, i don't know what to say but don't think it's as horrible to make it out to be but yeah overall it's okay next and finally the final movie for this my first year of 31 days of horror of 2020 on the 31st will be halloween 2018